Hey everybody, um, in this video I want to show you guys how to make a stretchy half Persian 3-in-1 um, but also there's going to be a lot of focus on how to join half Persian 3-in-1 and for some folks who have difficulty with it um, this is definitely a good way to kind of start and I actually really recommend stretchy chainmail to beginners so let's get started. What we have here um, are some 16 gauge 5 16 EPDM rubber rings from the Ring Lord as well as a rainbow of colors um, again from the Ring Lord in 16 gauge 5 16 and it can be really helpful I've found again in addition to using the stretchy rings to do rainbow color schemes in your work because you can tell what goes next and what your most recently added ring was um, and sometimes especially whenever you're like freshly new to chain mail it can be so easy to lose your place um, even now after I, I've been making chain mail professionally for nine years sometimes if I drop a piece I'm like ah where did it go <laughs> like especially if I'm tired or something or it's just it can be a headache so you're not alone if you're struggling <laughs> So I'm going to set up some open rings. To open a ring, you would just take take it and grip it on either side of where the opening is and just whomp, bring it open like that. I hope that that made sense. And I'm coming through. I'm not entirely sure how long I'm going to make this, so I'm going to set up a little bit of extra maybe. So I'm doing four in each color scheme, or color, I guess. I always try to splurge on saw cut rings if I can help it. Not all chainmail sites have the same colors available in both um, machine cut and saw cut. So sometimes by diversifying, uh, by using both machine and saw cut, you're able to get a broader color scheme which can, on gradients and stuff, can really give you some cool effects. Um, so just some things to keep in mind whenever you're shopping. But the saw cut um, has a very crisp, clean closure, whereas the machine cut can have a little bit of like a pinched end on one side. And so it makes for a smoother, finer chain mail whenever you use the saw cut, I think. Also, sometimes that happens, which my pliers slipped and it scraped the anodizing off, so I'm going to set that one aside to use maybe as a center ring for something else where you won't be able to see that the anodizing was scratched, but on something like this that's really showcasing the colors, I try to only use perfect rings. So that's what I get for rushing and not paying complete attention. Okay, so we're all set up. And I'm going to come through with my stretchy rubber. And with these, they're all they're already closed. And most of chainmail is just open and close rings. Like, that's it. <laughs> so that's kind of nice. As complicated as the weaves can get, at least the uh, foundation principles are pretty straightforward. And so for this weave, I'm going to start. Uh, my partner and I call these units. I don't know if anybody else uses those terms, but whenever you hear me say unit, it means one ring with however many closed on it. So in this weave, I'm going to have one ring with two closed on it on the first one, and then each unit after that is going to be one open with one closed. And so like for, um, for this one, there are 32 rings, yeah, 8 times 4, um, so if I were asking Randy to set it up for me, I'd be like, hey babe, would you set me up, uh, you know, 32 units of half Persian 3-in-1, and he would know what I meant, or I could be like, 32 units of one on each, two on the first, and none on the last, and he'd be like, oh, okay, and then he would go ahead and set it up, and he usually sets it up just like this, but like on a work surface that he can hand over to me, um, and that really helps kind of, for lack of a better term, assembly line it. Because with so much of what we do, um, 
because we've been making and selling jewelry and costumes for nine years professionally, like as our only source of income. Um, and so we try to be as time efficient and material efficient as possible. And so with both of us working on the same project, we can get it knocked out a little bit faster than if both of us were doing something different. So I'm not going to put one on that last one. And so I just wanted to pass what has worked for us on to y'all. Because that might not work for everybody, but again, different things work for different folks and that's what has been very successful for us. So now we're going to come through and you're going to pick up the first one, the first ring, and close it. I'm going to scooch these other rings kind of back out of the way and try to zoom in just a little bit. on some nice, clean, clear background. Okay. So we have our red with two rubber. And so it's situated like this. And I'm just going to slide this ring behind that ring. Embrace it with my finger. And now I'm going to take an orange and slide in toward this ring and then that ring. So they're laying correctly just like that. And close it. So I'm going to pick that back up just like how I had left it. And you can see just like how these two are stacked, those two are stacked. And so I'm going to take this stretchy ring and have it stacked properly, kind of boop, 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 like they're stair-stepped on top of each other. See how that works? And so I'm now I'm going to come through with a, oops, with a gold, and I'm going to hook through this one in the front, and then this one in the back. And you'll see, too, I'm going to close this one, and then I'm going to show you a crucial step where the colors come in handy too. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna grab this one. And this is where the rubber rings really come in handy is you can kind of stretch them and stuff to get them out of the way. But just like how these ones have that stair stepping, like they're all laying stacked on each other. Down here, you can see our red is under the orange is under the gold. And so that's just something that in that that one's still kind of like flopping around a little bit, but the more we weave, the more they'll lay in place. And so those are just different things to kind of keep an eye on, on, you know, you don't want this ring threading through the orange or anything like that. You want them kind of stacking. And so now I'm going to pick up a yellow. I was just straightening. Sometimes I'll grab it with my fingers and then re-pick up with my pliers. So hooking through that front ring, and then through that back ring, and then I'm going to close it. And be patient with yourself, and be patient with the medium that you're working with, too, with all things. Um, like, it, practice will pay off. If you're, if you're patient, and you practice, and you're persistent, like, as long as you're enjoying it, don't give up. You'll get there. Because it's like, with this weave, oh my god, guys, with this weave, the first week of me trying to do this weave, I was desperately trying to close it, but I was using like micro male 20 gauge, 1 8 inch, like tiny, tiny little rings. Um, <laughs> so everything has been easy since then, but that, that week shaved good years off my life <laughs> that I won't get back. <laughs> so just repeating this pattern. And that is something that there is a great benefit to weaving chainmail that for most weaves, once you get that pattern down, you just keep repeating it. Like, it's not like every five rings you're doing something new. I mean, you could if you wanted. So we did the green, so now I'm gonna do the light blue, just hooking through the front, and then hooking on the back ring. Oh, doggy, that didn't sound good. And then I'm gonna close it. And it's sitting just like that. Then I'm gonna hook it behind. It sits. And this this one rubber ring here on the end, 
it's just going to flop around. That's just what it wants to do. That's perfectly normal. We'll deal with that when we get there. So it's sitting like that. Because, I mean, you don't want... That's an example of how it is not continuing the pattern. It's like... Doo, 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 doo. So you just take it and kind of hook it behind. And so now we're going to do the dark blue. And if you look at it from here at the front, where those two rings overlap, it does make a little bit of like a Venn diagram. It just it makes this little eye where you can boop, just stick it right through there. Okay, so that's what we'll do. We'll just right through. So see how it's sitting on top of the blue ring? You don't want it to come through like that. That would be incorrect. Come on, camera. Like, see how it's just all kinds of wonky. Nope. And don't ever be afraid. Like, if you mess up, sometimes you're just going to have to unweave what you wove. It's just like ripping out stitches with knitting or crochet or a seam ripper with sewing. Sometimes it just happens. And that's actually one of the perks of chainmail is you are actually able to do that. Whereas, like, with sewing or with leatherworking, if you cut it and you cut it wrong, you're kind of stuck. Like, that's what you're stuck working with. Okay. So now we take this and tuck it behind, and we're going to add a purple, and that completes our color rotation. And I'm just going to close it. And so now, hopefully, y'all have the hang of it, because I'm just going to chat with y'all some while I keep weaving. And like most things, too, the more you do this, the faster you'll get. And it just starts coming through. And the rubber rings do cost a little bit more, like significantly more, than the metal rings. But they're so cool, you guys. And I've actually found they're very durable. They hold up well in both salt and chlorinated water. Um, they don't rust or tarnish or anything. Um... Well, the metal doesn't, but, like, the the rubber rings, like, they don't, like, make weird little growths or anything like that. But um, the only thing that we found that they don't hold up to is vegetable-based oils. Um, and I found that out because I was wearing one of our stretchy rubber rings, and I was making a meat marinade where you, like, massage the meat with um, the marinade. And, like, I was, like, almost up to my elbows because it was, like, a family barbecue. And with this, like olive oil, you know, soy sauce, like, you know, with a bunch of herbs and lemon juice and spices and stuff. Um, and my bracelet just like in the coming week was really like the, the rubber just started crumbling and I'm not entirely sure why that happened. Like something science was going on. Um, but we then field tested it. <laughs> the EPDM holds up wonderfully to yogurt, to pudding, uh, <laughs> to jello. So gelatin doesn't seem to bother it. Um, but yeah, it holds up pretty well to just about everything except for those vegetable based oils. And that was a case of like, I mean, it was submerged for maybe 20 minutes. Like, I mean, I had, I was up to my elbows for about five to 10 minutes and then it took me a little while longer of placing the meat onto the skewers before washing, you know, my, uh, my hands and everything. So maybe 20 minutes total of just about submersion. But uh, feel free to do your own field tests though and see what it holds up to. So I think I'm only gonna need to do three color rotations on this one. And I've had people um, ask me, well, how do you know how many uh, units long to do something? Like, especially if I'm using this to set a cabochon or cabbage, cabbage, I don't know, cab, undrilled stone. Um, and that's my, my only answer is trial and error. And that's a reason why I really like calibrated stones is because I know most of the time that if it's a 30 by 22 millimeter stone, it's going to take anywhere from 23 to 25 18 gauge C16 strings. Like that's years of experience talking, but it's like, I know to, to shoot for a roundabout in that range. Um, whereas it's been a long time since I've worked in this ring size on stretchy bracelets. This is usually something that Randy makes. So I'm like, I don't know how many it takes. So I'm just going to keep going until I find out. But I do know that, 
Um, it's around 32. Oh, <laughs> right, he's back there. He bites up because it's around 32. Um, <laughs> so maybe I set it up correctly. But I do know that I want a complete color rotation. And that looks like, let's see how many, how many inches this is. Because most bracelets, um, like seven and a half is a pretty standard size, but we do, um, we do custom resizing in the booth. So if something like this were to come out a little too long or a little too short for somebody's like preference, then we just do it there in the booth and we modify it for them. So for the most part though, we set stuff up to a seven and a half. So with this one, I'm at about a six and a half. So I'm going to modify down my next color rotation. I'm going to take one of the golds out and one of the blues out. And we'll see how long that gets us. So I'm just going to keep on weaving. Because that's if I lift in all the colors, it would make it like well over eight inches, and that's just a little too long. I'm actually, I think I'm gonna leave the orange out too. Because you kind of, you just want to give the gist of being a rainbow. And you could also go through and do these last couple of rings in just black aluminum or silver aluminum. That way, you don't like have to break the uh, rainbow sequence at all. Oops, didn't mean to go off camera. And there we go, closing that one. Gonna touch it with our finger. Okay, so now is the fun part. Or for uh, most folks, the not so fun part. And this is we are going to be joining the ends. And so the way that this works is you see we I've got one end and I've got the other. And we want it to be a continuous loop without a twist in it. So I'll lay it down and make sure I have the same face facing me. And then I'll just join it around and you can see I have if it if you're looking at it it kind of makes a little bit of a trough on one side and then it's rounded on the other I have it with the trough side facing out I don't know if that really matters but that's just how I do it feel free to experiment but I'm going to show you what I'm most comfortable with so I'm holding the end that I finished on my blue and I'm adding a purple ring that has no other rubber rings on it and I'm going to hook this purple one through one and two and now holding on to this I'm going to follow the length of the bracelet around until I get to where I started make sure that all those rings are laying correctly then I'm going to fold this over so again so that it's continuous all the way around and you can see, I want to be repeating this pattern. So I'm going to hook right through there on that rubber ring, right behind the red. And I'm going to close it. And now, right now, at this point, I guarantee you, it's not going to look like anything. It's going to be like, ah, I didn't do it right. But you did. You're doing fine. <laughs> now, from here, you're looking at it and you want to con continue this repetitive pattern so we're going to lift this ring and insert that one underneath it but oh no now those ones aren't stacked right so we'll just kind of position everything around so see how that's going to kind of go like that and we need this red ring to be going around this rubber so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this red ring just like that and it makes it kind of easier because you can't hook it over it you know on the wrong side so with the purple ring on this side of the red I'm just gonna hook that red ring trying to keep my fingers out of the way through it's hard to do when you're looking through the camera through right there 
Do you see how that worked? So everything's stacked properly that way. Everything's going to be stacked properly this way. So let's go ahead and close it and make sure we did it right. And there we are. We're good to go. And now also, my favorite part about the stretchy bracelets is there's no clasp. You just slide it right over your wrist and it just sits like that. So I am going to open this up and re-demonstrate one more time um, how I join them together. So we have our, pur our purple ring was the last one we added on. I'm going to zoom back in. Hush, baby. It's okay. It's just the neighbors. Oh, oh, she just ate and she's covered in flubber. Okay, so we have our purple ring open. Like we just, let's pretend like we just added it on. Okay. Oh no. I don't even know what they're doing, but they're making a mess. Um, and so I'm just going to take to make sure there's no twists or anything in the bracelet. And it just comes around. And I'm just going to hook that rubber ring onto the purple and then close it. And now I'm going to hold it like that. And that's how it looks. And so I'm going to, without paying too much attention to anything else, because it can just feel overwhelming and distracting, I'm just going to open up this red ring. And now I want this one, this black one here, sitting on top of that black one. And I want this purple sitting behind my red. So like that. But not in front of, but behind. And I'm just going to hook... Sorry, I was off camera, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna hook this red through, just like that. And I'm gonna close it. So, there we go, guys. Nice and stretchy. I'm gonna lay this down so y'all can get a good look at it. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful to y'all. If you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please check us out on Patreon. Um, there's a link down in the video description below where you can follow and um, if you pledge just a dollar a month, it puts your name in all of our giveaways one time. And it makes you um, eligible for our Patreon exclusive fairy house giveaway that we do twice a month. And then if you pledge $5, it puts your name into all of our giveaways five times, including the Patreon exclusive. Um, and so that's all of our Facebook, Instagram, uh, DeviantArt, even like my free seed giveaways here on YouTube. You're automatically signed up for all of those without any kind of additional liking or commenting or sharing or anything like that. So it's a little bit like a VIP club. Um... And then also if you pledge $10 or more, uh, you still get your name entered into all of the giveaways once each time, um, but you get a kit of like either a gift or tools and materials mailed to you every month, just your preference. And that's every month and the, what you get in the kit is a direct reflection of how much you've pledged. So if you pledge $50, you're going to get a lot more loot than if you pledge 10 So. Um, but yeah, and I appreciate all of y'all's support. Even if you can't become a patron, if you just like, share, and subscribe, or just enjoy yourself, just, uh, try something new and, and have fun, because that's the point. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, I do hope that this was helpful to you. I hope y'all have a fantastic day, and I'll see y'all around. Bye! <laughs>